Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 434, Anti-Aging Medicine Addresses Inactive Cells and Reverses Osteoporosis. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. This week we're going to be talking about new research that's being, or, or new concepts anyway, I don't know about the research, that, that's being looked at by the endocrinologist of the world. And they are being encouraged, but we read an article in their journal with January of this year, and one of the presenters at their international convention is encouraging endocrinologists to consider the possibility that instead of approaching the diseases of aging as individual incidents, standalone problems that need treatment, intervention, medicine for that disease, like diabetes or uh, senility or <clears throat> dementia or osteoporosis or fragility or what have you, that we ought to be looking at it globally. Let's look at the aging process and let's see if we can find the trigger that initiates the deterioration that comes to us with aging. We're excited about that because we've spent a lot of time already considering that and anti-aging medicine doctors who include as a group some endocrinologists but all kinds of specialties that focus on this process have somewhat discovered, they, they think, uh, that there is a trigger, that the trigger mechanism that introduces us to the diseases of aging is the loss of the hormone balances of our youth. So we find the critical hormones and we, as we age, those diminish. Our body just doesn't make them the way that it used to. And if we can replace those, we can avoid a lot of these individual diseases, a lot of the individual doctor visits, the individual medicines, the individual costs. We can look at the whole thing as a global concept. And that's what Dr. Maupin and her staff at BioBalance Health have been doing. Uh, if you read our two books, uh, The Secret <laughs> Female Hormone and Got Testosterone, both of which are now uh, out and available, uh, you'll see a more in detail explanation of these concepts. The, the best part of, of this article coming out in a mainstream medical specialty. Yes. So, so anti-aging specialties, they are also, we're also called, there's a whole lot functional medicine. They, they have lots of different names for what we do. Mm -hmm. It's basically preventive medicine that tries to make us healthier in many ways and give us back what we're missing as we age so that we won't get all the diseases of aging. We've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. Many doctors, 20 years. I've been doing it 17. Um, but that's a, a long time. And, and this is the first article I've seen in mainstream medicine that said, hey, <laughs> let's stop looking at a disease and treatment, disease, treatment, or condition or symptom, treatment, symptom, treatment, and collecting a, a huge group of medications and a group of, of actual treatments, office visits, other kinds of treatments, then why don't we go back to where did this start? And this is endocrinology, which is generally the study of hormones. That's, that's their definition. But most of them do take care of diabetes, take care of uh, pituitary tumors, pituitary problems, adrenal problems. So not sex hormones. Their interest has, has, they do a lot of research on sex hormones, but they leave that up to the OBGYNs to do the sex hormone treatment, infertility doctors. So in general, their interest has been part of the hormones. That's what they do on a daily basis. So we actually have been looking at all the hormones and trying to find out what triggers that, that aging process. And we found that the loss of testosterone and the loss of growth hormone that comes after it, those two things then start this domino, dominoes going of uh, cells die, cells don't, uh, and your tissues don't rebuild, they just break down. Mm -hmm. So um, 
you lose the ability to make bone as much bone as you break down, as much muscle as you break down. Bones and muscles. And so then you start to get fragile. And you see so many older people who who are on walkers or canes, mm-hmm. who, who don't have good balance. Maybe they've had a mini stroke. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and they... They fall, mm-hmm. they waver when they walk. Mm-hmm. If you go down the grocery store behind one of them and they're, they're like yeah. all over the entire physical space. Their balance they drive is off. that way. Yeah. Everything is. And they're I don't pers- want to be one of those people. I don't, I don't either. And, and no matter where you are in this continuum, whether you're young and none of these things have happened to you, yeah. or if you're yeah. p- halfway there, if you're 50 something, and some of these things have begun, you're, for, if you're a female, you're menopausal, your estrogen's gone, your testosterone's gone. You have lots of symptoms from that, but nowadays, for some reason, mainstream medicine does not replace estrogen and does not replace testosterone. They don't even consider it a woman's hormone. Right. So, so we have a long way to go because testosterone in both women and men is the first trigger for aging. And and if we're looking at the patient, something a person that we can see and the hormones that are coursing through their bloodstream, we can actually test those. Those are the two things that actually trigger the rest of the both macroscopic and microscopic, the, 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 what you can see in a person and microscopically all the little things that are happening inside your body, millions, billions of activities of enzymes and, and cellular activity that is happening because of these hormones and all the things that happen afterwards. This is, we look at the macroscopic. So this particular doctor in his research had the right idea. Let's look at what's happening first. And he's calling the endocrinologist into action to look, but he's looking at genetics and he's looking at cellular microscopic issues, which I believe happen after the hormones drop. I believe all of that stuff is is triggered right. by the loss of testosterone and growth hormone. and, and in the end, they'll probably figure that out. You know, when, when you, I, I think about it like the old joke about the six blind men describing the elephant. You know, they all find a different <laughs> piece of the elephant. They say, oh, this is what the elephant is. Right. I'm looking at the elephant. they can't see the entire <laughs> elephant. And that is what you and, and a lot of the anti-aging mm-hmm. doctors are saying is that we need to change the way medicine looks at the disease structure in, mm-hmm. in the world. And that we need to see it more globally and less symptomatically mm-hmm. and so it doesn't know, mean we don't look at symptoms no no but you it don't just don't focus s- on solving a particular problem and you've done your job we want to prevent right. those problems and we also want to look at the whole person and this symptom and this symptom and this symptom all together what caused that mm-hmm. not just this symptom let's treat it this symptom let's treat it like depression oh well let's give you an antidepressant that's what's become of medicine it used to not be that way When I was trained in in 40, 50, whatever, years ago, uh, 40 years ago, (laughs) gosh, time flies when you're having fun. No, I mean, you just, you can't count that far, that high. (laughs) Um, Then we looked at, oh, someone's depressed. Well, let's look at their thyroid because thyroid causes depression. Let's look at their testosterone if they're male because the testosterone Low testosterone in men would cause depression. Let's look at their cortisol. Very low or very high cortisol can cause depression. We looked for all those things. And because medicine has become more of a, I'll call it a wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, kind of treatment. You come in, you have five minutes, say your piece and you're gone. Mm -hmm. I mean, which is unfortunate. But um, that's what insurance companies have done to us. We We can't possibly look at the whole picture. We look at one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, that's not what medicine should be. So the pendulum swung all the way over here to look at one little thing and treat it with, then you end up with multi-medicine. Then we need to swing back to look at the whole person, which is what I do in my practice because I can't do it the other way. You have a non-traditional practice. Yeah, I have a non-traditional practice. Right. And, and um, I can't tell you how many people told me, this will never work. You'll never get people to come to you. And we, you know, I've had to have my daughter join me, who she, and she's probably as good or better than I am because she's family practice. She looks at the whole thing, and she loves doing it this way, loves having an hour with a patient and being able to look at the whole thing. And so practice medicine. And practice Instead of solve problems. Medicine. Yeah. And, and I mean, solving, well, solve problems. We're solving problems. Instead of just check the box on the computer. But finding the reason someone mm-hmm. has these things 
is is very important not to just it's it's kind of like your car's making a noise so instead of turn up the radio treating, right turn up the radio <laughs> instead instead of yeah. you know going under the hood and and going through all the things that it could be yeah you turn the radio up so you don't have to hear it so dr uh Kosla in his article the mm-hmm. interview that that he uh participated in was talking about specific things that he was looking at because because again he was looking genetically to find how do we identify cells that become inactive that are still in the body and take up space Mm -hmm. uh, but don't don't do any function because they've essentially died and he said how do we wake them up how do we wake them up you know before they deteriorate and process out is there a way to wake them up and so he's looking for a specific chemical a specific enzyme uh, and I call it looking at it microscopically, looking subcellular to see what's happening. We know what does happen, but we're looking at the, at the <laughs> here's the outcome, and we're looking at the, all these little steps that happened before it, and I'm over here saying well, but he's the trying first to step is Well, he's reinvent the big. wheel. What you want him to hear and other endocrinologists to hear is that much of this research and thinking has already been done. Right. And that some answers have evolved. Because he Mm -hmm. continues to say that there are nine different markers Mm -hmm. uh, of the aging process. And that cell inactivity, which he calls senescence, is just Mm -hmm. one of them. He doesn't really say hormonal lack or or lack of hormones. Because as humans, we were really only meant to live to 40-something when we could no longer reproduce. Just like other mammals, we were meant to die at the time that we could not produce uh, progeny. So, so what happens is at that time when we hit that age where we're too old by our hormones, our hormones go away. We should be dead, but we've extended life by doing medicine, by using medicine, by being intelligent. But we haven't extended extended our hormones to support okay. that life. So that's to me that's the big picture. And then we need to go from the big picture somehow to cellular stuff, but you need to have all the steps. Mm. They're going from the cellular backwards. And, and, so and it's that's, an inductive versus deductive right. reasoning. It's very hard to treat a patient at the cellular level. Yeah. I mean, you can't change their genetics. You can't change radiation that changes some of the genes and mutates them. You, there's many things intracellularly you can't change. So... We can study it, but we can't fix it. But if you change it, you can change it from the hormonal, the supplements, the the things that you you aren't able to know what minerals you need because your body becomes less sensitive to it. So you're not stimulated to eat something with calcium in it when you're low on calcium. Your body loses that ability. So that's one of the aging aging things. Well, I want to stop it before it hits there. Sure. I mean, we can we can treat anybody at any stage and bring them back some some a decade or two, but it's better if we treat them before all these things have happened. And if we know that, then we can avoid those things. And so we're not treating it symptomatically and reactively. We're we're being proactive. Right. And I applaud him for actually looking at this problem as as something that Doctors say, yes, we will look at at what aging has done to you. Mm -hmm. And yes, we're going to try to fix it. Instead of saying to everyone, which is the answer I got 17 years ago or 18 years ago, which was, um, you're just getting old, live with it. That's what endocrinologists told me. You're getting old, live with it. Well, that's what... (laughs) I was 47. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. You had this before? Well, you got it again. Yeah. Uh, That's, That's not an answer. To quote Dr. Kosla in this article, he says, we need to broaden our focus when thinking about age-related comorbidities, uh, i.e. osteoporosis, frailty, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, dementia, all the things that happen at the same time if you age long enough, if you don't Mm -hmm. die, you'll have these issues. He said, and instead of targeting each disease separately, consider approaches that target uh, fundamental aging mechanisms. Cell inactivity is just one of nine key mechanisms. Mm-hmm. And so then he goes through a list of others, and we'll, we'll post them if, you're, if you have access. You can read these online. But he talks about genetic mutations. Uh, 
we don't know what causes genetic mutations, but they do happen. Well, they're a, radiation, the evolutionary and, radiation, and, ra radiation, and and um, all the all the chemicals in our environment, and and just luck. <laughs> I mean, that can you know that can happen as well. Shortening of telomeres. Do you want to talk about what telomeres are? <laughs> telomeres are little tails on the end of your uh, chromosomes, and they sh they are long when we're young, and they shorten as we get older. Now that's a natural process, and we can use those telomeres to see how old your body is functioning. Like it's it to me, it's more of a measurement of how how all of these things have come together and aged you. To them, it's how how do we stop the shortening of the telomeres? But that's the same answer as I have: testosterone, growth hormone, and nutrients. Mm -hmm. So and exercise and good diet. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that are involved in that. To but delay that or stop he's it. He's looking at mm -hmm. that. Uh, the loss of protein communicators or peptides. Those there's There are thousands of peptides in your body which you've never heard of. They're little tiny communicators in between the cells in a tissue where one cell talks to the other with these little proteins. And we now know that some of these proteins go away as we get old. So we now know how to replace them. Now that's something we can do and we do in my practice. If someone, if testosterone doesn't stimulate all the, pro, all the peptides mm -hmm. to come back, then we can, in specific cases, give you back those peptides like... In, we, in addition to the testosterone. The testosterone. The we build on top of it mm -hmm. because if you've had a head injury or if you've had... Um, if you had chemotherapy, if you had other insults to your body, you may not be able to get all of those back, so we can give them to you now. Okay. Deregula deregulation of the ability to know when nutrients are needed. That's what I was, your body doesn't always, um, your body's in homeostasis. It's in balance or it tries to be in balance all the time, mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't know what nutrient, it, it loses the ability to be sensitive to what nutrient you need and where to put it. So that's an aging, that's an aging thing. And that's what he wants more study on is how do we get that back? My answer would be the same to start with that is to start with backing up somebody's aging process with hormones and with uh, peptides and then see what's, what they're not sensitive to. Mm -hmm. So, um, well, the, the endocrinologists really do a microscopic focus on different cells, uh, segments of the body, different mm -hmm. organs, different tissues. When you read their articles, it's almost unreadable yeah. because there's so much genetic, like this gene and this gene. I mean, you'd have to have a genetic map in front of you to really understand exactly what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So they are really kind of a, they start with microscopic stuff and then end up exactly what we said. That's so their normal process. Back that vision out further. Mm -hmm. Okay. The mitochondrial uh, dysfunction is important. That's the next one. Mm -hmm. And mitochondria are, are the little, uh, you may remember, they look kind of like um, like beans with lines through them if you draw them on a, on a uh, chart. I've, I've never done that. If but. you've done, if you've had biology, you have. <laughs> but but they're the, they are the part of your cell that actually uses oxygen and makes, and makes energy. So that's where your energy comes from. So it's like a little battery. And it, it actually is taking the oxygen and using it appropriately. What happens as we get older is some, our mitochondria stop using our, act, our oxygen appropriately. And then our cells get really tired it's and like they an die early. It's like an air filter in your car. It just clogs up after a while. And yeah, but it's, air filters are kind of passive. They aren't doing something. This is a very active part of your cell. Okay. So it's not a passive. It may be more like those air filters that have electrons, you know, you know, trapping. On oh, your home furnace, yeah. yeah. So, um, so it's, but it is very active and very important. And you've heard of mitochondrial DNA. There's DNA inside the mitochondria that's mm -hmm. passed from mother to, to child. You can always go back and find your mother, you know, your mother's ancestors through the mitochondria. So they have their own DNA even. But mitochondria can be treated with different nutrients. Like if you increase your, for example, if you increase your um, nitric oxide, the same thing that Viagra gives you, the same thing that Neo40, the supplement gives you, that increases the oxygen, uh, the ability of the mitochondria to use oxygen appropriately. Okay. It gives you energy. That's what Viagra does. That's 
I'm just it, curious. it does it just for a few hours. Yeah. No, no, it works in a different way for the function you're thinking of. But that's how, that's what it, it increases nitric oxide. And then it, uh, to go through the rest of the list, increased cellular inactivity, which is called senescence. Mm -hmm. And we, we spoke of that earlier. Mm -hmm. Some of the cells just stop working. They stop doing mm -hmm. what they need to do. Loss of stem cell activity, which is the ability to regenerate and grow new tissues and new cells. And so if you get a wound, uh, your, your wound doesn't heal as quickly. Your immune uh, system doesn't work. So as we get older, if you've noticed many of the um, immunizations that we're told to get, mm -hmm. half of them aren't going to, half of the people aren't going to get an uh, immune response because their immune system isn't it's working already. as well because it's aging. So that's, that's really what the stem cell activity um, is needed for, is for fighting infections fi and, and wound healing. But that's why people don't, that, you know, like a pneumonia might kill somebody who's 80, but would just, you know, make you sick and, and go to bed if you're 40. And, and then the last one is lack of cell to cell communication. The, so what he is doing is saying there are these nine ingredients to the aging process that they've identified. And he is micro focusing on one the inactivity of the cells and the example of osteoporosis as, as one of the ways that that damages you. Mm -hmm. He's saying there are eight more, and we've listed them, we've talked about them, that other endocrinologists need to look at as they try to get enough data to get a place where they can stand to step back and look at the whole overall process. What Dr. Maupin is saying and other anti-aging specialists, we've already done that. We know what the overall process is, and we have to deal with the replacement of, uh, of hormones and, if necessary, supplementation with peptides. And if we can do that, we can then avoid a lot of these other illnesses, doctor's visits, frailty, fragility. And reverse all these changes cellularly. Yeah. We just go a step higher in the chain of command. And so that is something that we, we use hormones and other and nutrients as well as peptides to then make all these cellular problems basically go away or not happen. So sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. What we're saying is <laughs> let's step back and look at the whole forest. We're still thankful that he did this research and that he... Because it's a mainstream yeah. medicine reaction. Right, and, and it's, it's our that. first step, I think, into the mainstream medicine, thinking like an anti-aging doctor. All right. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.